Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. It's always hard to be the first speaker, but uh, I'll try to get over it. Um, you took some of my the information I was going to give to them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for such an inspirational uh, opening remarks. Um, maybe before I start to talk a bit about the issue, um, uh, what I've been doing this issue, uh, I'm an activist, a journalist, a trainer for 20 years. And one of the main reasons I'm doing this, of course, uh, is to save lives, but also to inspire others to do something good for their community. So uh, for me, this work is very, very important. Uh, I'm always happy to be invited to talk and whatever I'm invited, be it a small classroom, a big audience, I just go and talk because I think spreading the word is one of the most important things uh, to do to involve people, to raise awareness about this issue. And uh, the reason, of course, I'm saying that is when I started reporting for the Jordan Times uh, back in 1993, the issue was taboo. Nobody wanted to talk about it. It was always considered as a family issue, uh, internal family issue, that nobody should get involved. Uh, bef before I start a bit about my journey, I would like to, uh, uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the issue of honor murders or honor killings, but I would like to identify it, tell you a bit about uh, how, why it happens, and some statistics from the world. So a so-called honor crime occurs when a family of a female relative, usually they're females, decide that their uh, female tarnished their image or reputation. And tarnishing the image or reputation uh, could be by being raped, getting involved in a relationship, being uh, uh, pregnant out of wedlock, for going missing from home, sometimes for financial inheritance reasons, for sometimes for the way they dress or they want to choose a certain life or a certain husband. So the, the reasons vary. So they decide that they want to kill this female to get rid of her and get rid of the shame. So to them, blood cleanses honor. Okay? Uh, these murders are a global problem. It's not uh, murders that are restricted or only limited to certain society or certain religion. There's always misconception about this issue. Uh, the murder of women has been happening since the ancient civilizations. And this is one of the reasons when I wrote the book, I wanted to know the source of these murders. Did it just happen, you know, when I w was born and gr uh, grew up and I decided, discovered that these murders are happening? No. Violence against women is, has been going on for the longest time since ancient civilizations. In some civilizations, they only punished women, they didn't punish men. In the Roman civilization, for example, women were considered as property to their husband, their family, and once they're married, then they become the property of their husband. If they uh, cheated on their husbands, they get killed. If their husband cheats on them, he's a hero. And basically, this is what's happening in, in, in our daytime now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if a woman did something wrong, the blame, wrong of course, according to the social uh, standards, she is to be blamed. A lot of people, when they come and talk to me, you know, the woman should do this, the woman should get that. The, I tell them, excuse me, there's a man with her, hello. She's not doing something alone, she's not with a ghost. So that's, that's a problem, you know, we always have this conception or, uh, uh, you know, that it's always the woman. So we have to think of both, okay? So basically, this is, uh, this is, this is some uh, clarification. Of course, uh, the numbers you gave were in 2000. There was the last official uh, study that was done by the UN and the World Health Organization. Uh, 5,000 women get killed every year. Of course, I think the number is much higher. Um, so this is very alarming. Another alarming fact is that 10 or 15 years ago, they used to say one in four women in the world will be subjected to some form of violence in her life. Now the number is one in three. So this is an increasing number. It could be, there could be several reasons. One reason is uh, because of better reporting, better services for women. I think also the increase in population. When there's an increase in population, the murder rates increase and so forth. That's why I always say that we always have to uh, raise awareness about this issue uh, empower women, tell them that there's a place they can go to. There's a lot of women who are abused, who think that, okay, you know, he will get better, you know, he will get better. Of course, based on studies uh, in the US and elsewhere, if the violence increases, chances are women are going to be killed. It's not, he's not gonna get better. 
And there are places that can help women without having to separate families or anything. So this is, this is very, very important for anyone, if you know anyone, or if anyone in this room is subjected to some form of violence, to know that there is help out there. Just look for it. And don't sit, sit and think the situation will get better. Okay, now back to my uh, experience when I started reporting for the Jordan Times, and the Jordan Times, of course, is uh, the only English daily in Jordan. Back in 1993, um, I came across a very sad story of a 16-year-old schoolgirl who was killed by her family. Uh, what she did, of course, was she was a victim of incest. Okay, her brother raped her. This is not an everyday occurrence in Jordan, but this was the case that basically pushed me to do everything that I'm doing, and you see me now standing today because of that story. It was a horrific story. Uh, her family blamed her for being raped. Her, uh, her, her, the one who raped her, he threatened to kill her if she told her family. She had to tell them because she became pregnant. She underwent a secret abortion. They married her to a man 34 years older than her. Six months later, this man divorced her. The day he divorced her, they killed her. Imagine, she's only 16, she hasn't seen anything in life and she ends up being blamed. So I reported this for the Jordan Times, and the following day we received a call from an intellectual woman who studied abroad, who started screaming and yelling at my editors that they should stop me from reporting these murders. Because this is not us, this is not our society, I'm tarnishing Jordan's image, all of that, so I became even more enraged, you know, that the call from, came from a woman, instead of supporting me, she's trying to silence me. So I said, I'm going to report each and every case I hear about. At that time, no, the, the Arabic press would either not report the case or will just write a small item in the in newspaper. Police, uh, a woman was killed, police are investigating. So I, was, I, I said, I'm going to give a face, a name, a story to each and every woman I hear about who gets killed. Of course, that was uh, with the support of the Jordan Times, uh, editors, my colleagues. Um, so I started reporting the cases, and then I went to court, and I discovered that men who were killing their female relatives were getting away with very lenient sentences. Three months, six months, one year, mostly for premeditated murder. So this was another shocking uh, you know, fact for me. So I started reporting the, ca the, ca uh, the court cases. And also I discovered that women who survive these murders, they put them in prison to protect them from their families and they stay there for indefinite periods without any charge. So these are the three things I focused on. Back then people were telling me, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. Uh, you, 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 you write in English, uh, no, nobody's going to believe you, nothing's gonna ever change in this country. This is a story that, you know, this is a sentence that I was, you know, don't, nothing will ever change. But I said no. Even my mother was like, you know, because I, when you ask about inspirational people, I said mother. I don't know if you heard me. I was the first person. My mom I did, was but you were going to steal my line. <laughs> so even my mother was like, you know, why are you writing about, uh, you know, women who get killed? Write about politics. You know, because I'm a journalist, so the expectation is you have to write about politics. But I don't want to write about politics because in our part of the world, you know, I believe that uh, it's very hard to change things because of the way we are living now because of, I don't want to go into politics. <laughs> so I said, I'll work, I'll focus on the social issues and I can make a difference socially. So I started reporting each and every case and until 1998, I thought I was just documenting each and every case. And I said, because the Jordan Times is read by uh, decision makers, uh, the royal family, diplomatic missions, intellectuals, I said, I'm gonna nag these people. They have to say something. And we started receiving letters to the editor, people voicing their outrage about these murders, about the court verdicts, and so forth. In 1998, I was nominated for the Reebok Human Rights Award. This award does not exist anymore, so don't dream of having this award. <laughs> no, it's given to four individuals in the world every year for their activism and human rights. Anyway, it was in New York, uh, so I was nominated I w uh, and I won it. I was one of the four, so I went to New York. It was a glamorous celebration. Glenn Close, Peter Gabriel, you know, celebrities, and all of that, and Glenn Close gave me the award and so forth. But there, I discovered that I was also a human rights activist, not only just a journalist documenting. 
So the responsibility even grew more on behind my back, it was on, on over my shoulder, whatever you call. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> So anyway, when I came back, a group of young men and women approached me and said, we have to do something on the grassroots level. So we uh, formed a group of people, seven women and four men. We were meeting every week. It was called the Jordan National Committee to Eliminate So-Called Honor Crimes. We decided that we wanted to do something on the grassroots level. So we started collecting signatures. We uh, printed pamphlets. We went outside everywhere in Jordan, talking to people face to face, you know, telling them about the problem. Uh, uh, there was a v uh, extensive media coverage about our activities. We were not registered under any NGO, just a group of in uh, inter uh, encouraged young and men and women. Uh, of course, the media covered our activities. We were on TV, we were in uh, universities, everywhere you can imagine. That's in the late 1990s. Of course, uh, the women's movement did its share. The, the, it started moving. The government also started to move. Uh, people, you know, so there were people with us, people against us, accusing us of being Western agents who want to just sexually liberate women and so forth. On the other hand, people were with us. So it was really an exciting time for Jordan. Our activities helped break the taboo about this issue forever. Now, you know, to, to jump quickly, uh, the things that happened since the late 90s until now, a lot of things have changed. From remember, they said nothing ever changes. First of all, I know that uh, you know, there's a problem with the laws, and actually the laws, uh, the laws regarding these murders are present in almost uh, all the Arab uh, legal system, let's say. Uh, and our legal system is derived from the Napoleonic Code, talking about adultery. You know, if a, a man walks in and finds his wife or female relative uh, uh, in an adulterous situation, kills one or both, is exempted. No, I'm actually sorry, committing adultery then he is exempted from punishment. And another clause, if he finds them in an adulterous situation, then he uh, benefits from a reduction. This is almost present in all uh, uh, legal books in the Arab world. So uh, um, this was not, the, the, you know, most of the Arab countries, because there's a lot of Arab countries that did work on this issue. Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, even Yemen, they did, they tried, they did social movements. In some countries, they did small amendments to this article. But what happened in Jordan, the most important thing is that the legal application of the, the law itself has changed in courts. Before, it was just another woman who get killed. We don't want to, you know, khalas. The man uh, killed her, he went, uh, said, I killed her, here is the weapon. So for them, it was an easy case. Now, it's no longer the case. There is better investigation, and that's because of our activism, because of the training uh, the judges and criminal prosecutors had that you know, a, woman's, a woman's life is worth more than three months or six months. Now the court is handling each and every case, even if a person claims family honor, the court now is handling each case of uh, such cases as a normal murder. Now, the minimum, the minimum a man gets for killing a female relative is 15 years. Maximum is life. <laughs> so this is something very, very important. Another important thing for, for, that I, I saw from our activism is that we pushed the government to acknowledge we have a problem. When I started, and then, you know, because every, I, I write in English, we have researchers and so forth coming to talk to me. The, when they go talk to the government, oh, she's exaggerating, it's only five or six cases a year. When we did our activism as a group in the late 90s, okay, we have 12. Now they tell you we have 20 to 25 or go and ask Rana Husseini. So now I'm the source. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, th so that's something very important. We push the government to acknowledge we have a problem and when the government, your government acknowledge there's a problem, then the government is responsible for the safety and security of its citizen. So this is something very, very important. Another thing that we achieved, of course, or I would say as a society, is the media change and approach to these murders, to uh, sensitive issues in Jordan that were never, we never dream dreamed of having 10 or 15 years ago. Child molestation, rape, abortion, uh, virginity issues, uh, so-called honor crimes, of course, violence against women, these issues we could have never dreamed of having in our 
local media. Now it's being reported very, very openly. If you talk to anyone, everybody knows about it. It's no longer just, oh, really, we do have this? Really, we have women in prison? Really? Now everybody knows. And because of the internet, people now started to voice their opinion. And I feel that there is a change towards society's acceptance of such murders. Of course, there are still people who believe that women should be killed, but the number of people who are against this has, ha has increased. And this is very important, because when you want to change something, it's not only the laws. If you, if you impose the death penalty, murders will not stop. If you only work on the media, it will not, it's, it's a comprehensive process, okay? So this is very, very important. Now we are, we, we're working on the so, uh, mindset of the people, okay? Because we're not saying anything that contradicts the religion or the society or the human rights, uh, you know, uh, ideas and uh, values. So this is something very important. We approach it from this angle. So it's very, very important to be sensitive to our culture and try to address it in a way not to impose it, okay? Uh, not to come and say, not to, not to demonize a society or a religion. There's a problem, uh, you know, in addressing certain issues, they try to link it to a certain religion or a certain culture. This does not help. Violence against women is an, is an international problem. It happens everywhere. Killing of women happens everywhere. We have to work on preventing the murder, okay? Trying to empower women. This is what we need to work on. Not come and say, this society does this, this society does that. This does not serve anyone, to be honest. Another thing is now more men are involved, and it's very, very important uh, to involve uh, men in this fight and have them next to us. It doesn't serve to come and say, men are evil, men are bad, men kill. Because many of the men who kill, they are also victim of these murders because I don't think anyone really wants to kill his uh, daughter or sister or the woman he grew up with to love and care for. Because it's, it's, a social, uh, it's like social brainwashing. You have to kill, you have to kill, you have to kill, you have to kill. If you don't kill, people will look down on us, people will hate us, people will, we will be outcast. Uh, so, you know, some societies or some families, they turn a, a normal human being into a killer. So it's very, very important to have, and I'm really happy that there are men in this. Uh, when I first looked, there were only women. But now I see there is more men. So it's very, very important to have men next to us. <laughs> and finally, of course, uh, education is, is very important. Uh, I believe that, uh, let's say, in our part of the world, education, the education system is not uh, the best. And I think we have to work more on our education system. I don't know about the education system here, so I cannot uh, judge. But it's mostly based on memorizing. So we have to f uh, focus, m work more uh, on uh, uh, changing the education, uh, the school curriculum, to be more uh, creative, more uh, think more, eliminate the stereotypical image of women in the school textbooks. Because until now, in our part of the world, women cook, men are engineers, uh, women pray, men are playing sports. So we have to we have to change this. It's very very important. Um, the last thing I want to say is that th there were several movements that happened in other countries. Uh, Syria, of course, before the, the revolution, was one of the countries that, in the beginning, they said, we don't have a problem. We only had one woman being killed in one year, in 40 years. That was in the mid-90s. But then uh, there was a very, very sad story that happened in, in, in Syria, and the president decided to get involved. And by the way, the, the royal family in Jordan also got involved. So it really helped that the entire, you know, like the royal family, the government, the civil society, everyone was involved, and it's very, very important. So the president also decided to, uh, uh, to, to talk about the issue, and all of a sudden, from one woman in 40 years in Syria, there's between 200 to 300 women who get killed every year. Uh, and there's a lot of NGOs that are working on this issue. In Yemen, the number is similar. In Jordan, it's between 20 to 25. Uh, Lebanon, around 10. Uh, Pakistan, uh, you know, the, the government figures are around less than 1,000 uh, activists, it's uh, 1,500, 1,600 a year. Of course, the numbers vary because of the population. Afghanistan, uh, around 400. Turkey, I think, over 100. So uh, these, are the, these are the countries that worked the hardest on this issue. Uh, and there, uh, the, there was a civil movement in their, uh, in their societies as well. And there was changes in their societies as well. So I want to conclude <laughs> by saying 
that uh, everyone, everyone can make a difference, okay? Be it an individual or a group. Just believe in what you're doing, follow your heart, okay? And one thing, the, the, the most important thing that I feel, and I know that anyone who gets involved, is that at least when I go to sleep, I know that I did something good for, for, for my community, for women, I know that I saved a life. And this is, I think, is much more important than a fortune. Thank you very much.